All right, it's my pleasure to introduce Gabor uh, Hetje from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. And he'll be talking about the dual of the type B permutahedron as a Chebyshev triangulation. Yes, thank you very much. I feel very honored in this great company of speakers. And uh, this is a wonderful organized conference. The only thing I am missing is the trip to Jerusalem, which I was really counting on, but maybe next year. Okay, so uh, I have posted a full paper on the archive and it's more detailed than the extended extract. There are some new results there and the references are also more extensive. Okay, so the plan is the following. I will talk about a lot of stuff you may already know and then of, about some of my new results and uh, by that time, hopefully I run out of time. Okay, that's not really the plan, but... Anyway, first I will talk about Chebyshev triangulations. This is the part I feel most important about. Then the graded full set of intervals, which has a large literature. Then about the dual of the type B permutahedron and then about flag number formulas. Okay, and since we don't want to lose time, I want to give a visual definition of the Chebyshev triangulations and if your eyes can are fast, I can do it really fast, okay? So the idea is you have first of all a simplicial complex. This is my simplicial complex here. It has one empty set, so the negative one-dimensional face uh, is only one. It has four vertices. It has five edges and it has two faces. And what we are going to do is we will put a vertex in the middle of each edge and we will connect it to all the other vertices inside the larger space uh, that contains it. Okay, so first we put this midpoint here and I contacted it, connected it and we put this, 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 this. Okay, so once again it goes like this. Okay, and at the end we still have one empty set. We have now nine vertices, 16 edges and eight triangles. But of course you can do this in many ways. Here is another way of doing this. And once again you get one empty set, nine vertices, 16 edges, and eight triangles. Same as before. I observed this but I didn't know how to prove it. So I took Aaron Nevo as my co-author and together, mostly him, actually only him, I proved this that all Chebyshev triangulations of the same simplicial complex have the, the same phase numbers. Actually, we proved this in a greater generality, but this is what we need. Okay, now you may wonder why the name Chebyshev. The reason is because when you do this triangulation, what happens to the phase numbers is most easily defined, uh, described in terms of the Chebyshev polynomials. First of all, you need to take a uh, somewhat unusual F polynomial where you multiply the number of J element faces, J minus one dimensional phases by X minus one uh, over two to the J. So for example, our original complex had one empty set, four vertices, five edges, two triangles, and after simplification, I'm getting X plus two X squared plus X cubed over four. Okay, and then, for the Chebyshev triangulation, one empty set, nine vertices, 16 uh, edges, and so on, I get this other polynomial, and what's the relation? Now watch it. Look, here the coefficients were uh, one fourth, two fourths, one fourth, and you replace x, x squared and x cubed with the first Chebyshev polynomial, the second Chebyshev polynomial, and the third Chebyshev polynomial, and you get this phase, uh, F polynomial of the triangulation. Okay, so where this is one way of defining of the Chebyshev polynomial of the first kind that you take cosine nx and you write it as a polynomial of cosine x. Okay, so this is one thing we want to uh, know about. The other thing is the Chebyshev triangulations of the second kind. So these are a little trickier because we will talk about uh, multi-sets of simplicial complexes, okay? We look at the multi-set of links of the original vertices. So here, the original vertices are black, the midpoints of the edges are white. And if I look at any vertex here, 
It, it is contained in three edges, which become three vertices, and it is contained in two triangles, which become two edges. And we have four times the same picture. So now I will say that the F negative one is four because I have four complexes. Number of uh, vertices is 12, number of edges is eight. And if you look at the other picture, miracle of miracles, I get the same numbers. Again, I had no idea why, but Aaron Nivo was with me. And so he proved that all Chevish have triangulations of the second kind have the uh, same face numbers. Okay, now, uh, why are these Chebyshev uh, triangulations of the second kind? Because we can play the same game. Remember, we had this F polynomial for the original complex. Okay, you look at this Chebyshev triangulation of the second kind, you get this. And actually, what you get is that you are supposed to replace the powers of X by the Chebyshev polynomials of the second kind. Uh, kind and you just need to take half of it. So there is a factor of one half just to annoy everybody, but that's it. Okay, and so actually, the, actually this is pretty interesting because, for example, if you plug in a, uh, a unit complex number into a polynomial with real coefficients and you want to get the real part and imagine every part, then actually you are doing this kind of transformations that you send x to the n into the Chebyshev polynomials. Okay, now next I would like to mention that originally I came up with this idea by defining the Chebyshev transform of a poset. Okay, the easiest way to do this is the following, that you think of the intervals in the poset as half open intervals. Okay, and then you say that one interval is less than equal to the other if uh, either the lower interval is an initial in segment of the uh, larger one or it's entirely below it. I don't want to talk about this poset today. I just wanted to mention that, uh, yeah, so one thing uh, that that if you look at the order complex of the Chebyshev uh, triangulation, of the Chebyshev transform of a poset, it is the Chebyshev triangulation of the suspension of the original order complex. If you don't know the order complex of a poset is a simplicial complex whose faces are the chains, okay? And Ehrenborg and Reddy have a great paper about this where they look at this transformation which takes graded posets into graded posets and uh, so I don't want to talk about this today too much except I will be stealing ideas and failing by trying to do so so I'm like a bad student trying to copy in a new setting. Okay now the next uh, topic is the poset of intervals this has been widely studied before it's simply the intervals of a poset ordered by in inclusion. And there is an old result of Walker saying that if you take the uh, poset of intervals, uh, its order complex is a triangulation of the order complex. And I have a new proof of this, which shows that this is actually a Chebyshev triangulation. Okay, so here is a simple poset. It has two chains and this one here has three element, it becomes a triangle, and this one here just becomes an edge. And here is its poset of intervals ordered by in inclusion. And all you need to go is you need to go downwards, you know, you go downwards and you get a Chebyshev triangulation. Okay, this seems like little more than Walker's result. The only difference is that now you know that every time this happens, you know how to count the faces because you just substitute the Chebyshev polynomials. Okay. And we can make this into a graded full set by just adding a unique minimum element, which we call empty set. So for example, if we have a, a, a chain like this here, with four elements, it becomes a fairly symmetric, nice poset like this. Please note that the, at the bottom level, you have the singletons, which are like the original vertices in the order complex. And after that, you have the midpoints of the edges. Okay, and I would like just to point out that 
if you look at the other Chebyshev transform that I originally defined and that was studied extensively by Ehrenborg and Reddy, then for a chain you get something like this. So it's very, very different. This picture doesn't look like this picture. You could prove it, but maybe you don't have to. You just look at it and you see it's different. Okay. Uh, by the way, here the original vertices are up to, uh, on top, right? Any element. Uh, to the maximum element, at the element to the maximum element, that's it. Okay. And uh, so in analogy, analogy to the uh, situation of the Chebyshev transform of a poset, one can show that the order complex of uh, uh, the poset of intervals with the minimum and maximum element removed is the Chebyshev triangulation of the suspension of the original order complex. Okay, let me talk about a minute about this suspension thing because I am going too fast. Okay, so usually when you have a graded poset, the graded poset is a poset with a rank function with a unique minimum and maximum element. Okay, if you, if you take just the order complex of that, then the minimum element and the maximum element then belongs to every phase. So you get like, uh, the a complex cone twice. People like to remove that, okay? And when we are talking about suspension, it means we are putting them back, but we are not putting back the, the uh, chains containing both the minimum and maximum element, okay? So you get like the boundary of a bicone. Okay, and now comes the type B permutohedron, where all that happened was that I realized at some point that the numbers for the phase numbers of the type B permutohedron and type A permutohedron look familiar to me from earlier work where I was working with Chebyshev triangulation. So I started getting suspicions. Okay. Now, first of all, the type A permutohedron is something I don't want to define. It's a simple polytope and it's dual is a simply shell complex. It's, uh, it's the uh, Boolean algebra. Okay, and then for the type B permutohedron, again, it's a simple polytope, it's dual, it's simplicial, and there is a little more complicated description of its spaces. Okay, I, this is a mouthful to read out. I am not going to read this out. All I would like to point out is that the facet inequalities of the type B uh, permutohedron look like this. Some of certain coordinates, let's call that set like k1 plus, minus some of other coordinates, let's call them k1 minus, are less than equal to some magic number. Okay, so you can describe every facet by a pair of subsets of the n element set. Some of them correspond to the positive coordinates, the others, the negative coordinates, and then you have some compatibility condition. And if those are satisfied, then the intersection of these facets is not empty. Okay. And so all I, I realized it that in this magic recording, you need to replace the negative sets with their complements. And then suddenly you have intervals and the condition becomes just that you need to have a chain of intervals in the uh, poset of intervals of the Boolean algebra. Okay, so what we obtain that way is that the dual of the time B permutohedron is a simply shell polytope whose boundary complex is combinatorial equivalent to the Chebyshev triangulation of the suspension of the order complex of the Boolean algebra. So here is a picture. Actually, here are two pictures. Okay, so this is how I would draw half of the three dimensional type B uh, permutohedron. Okay, first of all, at the corners, you have just the elements of an n element set, one, two, three. Okay, then uh, you take the barycentric subdivision of the boundary. Did I do that? Yeah, I did that. Okay, uh, okay, so th these are still intervals, but uh, non-trivial, uh, so, sorry, these are still one element intervals, but uh, not one element sets anymore. 
okay? And then here, this is the upper half of the picture. You put in the empty set, and then the other intervals become midpoints, and you do a Chebyshev triangulation. So you should imagine that this is a triangle, and this empty set is above it. You know, it's like a cone here, okay? And you subdivide it. And this is the upper half, and the lower half is similar, except that here you have the one, two, three, the inclusion relations will be dif different, so the triangulation will be different. You glue these two pieces, uh, pieces together, and that's how you get a drawing of the type, the dual of the type B permutohedron. Okay, if it looks familiar, you shouldn't be surprised because the poset of intervals of the Boolean algebra have been studied by Athanasiades and Savidu. They studied the type B derangement polynomials. And also very recently, Anwar and Nazir published a paper in, the, uh, in GCTA about interval subdivisions, okay? And it is a, a consequence of their result, result that the H polynomial of the type B Coxeter complex, sorry for using this word without introduction, that simply the dual of the type B permutohedron has real roots. And now I realize that I have proved this years ago, this statement, without realizing it, okay? Because years ago, I have proved that for, the, for another Chebyshev triangulation of the Boolean algebra, that uh, the phase the polynomials, they're actually the so-called derivative polynomials for the secant, okay? The derivative polynomials for the secant are defined by this formula. You take the nth derivative of the secant and it becomes a degree n polynomial of tangent multiplied by secant, okay? And so the exact relation is this, that if you look at the poset of intervals of the Boolean algebra with the minimum and maximum element removed, and you count the faces in the order complex and you multiply by powers of x minus one over two, then you need to plug in square root of negative one to get, uh, to get uh, alternating signs. So I could also say, actually, I'm looking at the uh, derivative polynomial for the hyperbolic secant, okay? And, uh, and that's what's going on. And many years ago, I proved that all roots of the derivative polynomials for the hyperbolic tangent and secant are interlaced reals and they belong to the interval negative one, one. And by the way, there is this mag magic transformation between the F polynomial and the H polynomial. And so if these guys have real roots and they are not one, because that would be just uh, the sum of positive things, then then it's, uh, if these have real roots, then these have real roots. This transformation, sending t into one plus t over one minus t is called the Möbius transformation in complex analysis, and it comes up in stability theory. Uh, anyway, so, so I didn't know this because I, at the time I wrote that paper, I didn't realize that the uh, dual of the type B permutohedron has the same H polynomial than the object I was looking at, but now I know because both are Chebyshev triangulations. Okay. Okay, now flag numbers, okay? So uh, if you start with a graded poset and you take the poset of intervals, you get again a graded poset and I'm going to dash through this, okay? So when you have a graded poset, you have the so-called flag F vector where you count chains hitting a certain set of runs and you associate to them an A, B uh, polynomial in non-commuting variables. Richard always said that A is absent, B is belong. And then, uh, okay, uh, now, if you take the interval transform, it turns out to be a linear map. Jojic proved this, and he used the so-called ehrenborg reddy Koop product, which simply takes a, a, a word of length U, N, and it skips a letter, letter, the ice letter in any every possible ways, and the initial segment is before the tensor sign, and the rest is after, and, after, and Jojic came up with this 
formula for which he has a proof. And now in my uh, paper, I have another proof, which is a little shorter, uh, but I'm not going to talk about this today. Instead of that, I would like to talk about the interval transform of the second kind. Remember that taking the full set of intervals corresponded to a Chebyshev triangulation, but then there is the Chebyshev triangulation of the second kind, where you look at the links of the vertices, the original vertices. Now, this corresponds to the following transformation, that you take the full set of intervals, and then the original vertices co co correspond to the singleton intervals. So you look at just the set of intervals containing a given singleton and you take the multi set of these, that would be the interval transform of the second kind. And there is a beautiful formula to what happens to the AB index, okay, using the magical operator, M is for magical, no, M is for mixing, okay? Ehrenborg and Reddy introduced this operator. If you want to compute the AB index of the direct product of two posets, then you need to take, apply this mixing operator to these, uh, to their AB indices, okay? And so you do that, uh, for u and you take u reverse, this star means write it in reverse, and then in the first coordinate you plug in the reverse of u1. And you get this formula, every talk needs to have a joke and a proof, here is the, pro here is the proof which is like a joke, okay? Uh, it turns out that directly if you look at what are the intervals y, z that are co uh, contained in this interval, it means that, that y needs to be less than x, so it needs to be in 0x, and z needs to be in x1, okay? And the order is reversed because if you go down with the y, it becomes larger, the interval becomes larger, and that's the proof. Okay, now for Eulerian posets, Athanasia is already observed based on Walker's result that you get an Eulerian poset, so there are CD index formulas, CD indices were introduced by Bayer and uh, Klapper. Okay, now the ladder poset here is famous because its CD index is C to the N, and UEH already computed what happens if you have apply the interval transform to this and uh, got the coefficient, which is the same as the Ehrenborg ready formula for the Chebyshev transform of the same poset. Okay, and I also wanted to do something. So what I did, I did the same calculation for the interval transform of the second kind, and I found this, and the proof involves uh, expressing these mixing operating value, uh, values as total weights of lattice path. Okay, and then, Okay, so the poset of intervals of the Boolean algebra becomes a cubical lattice, and Ehrenborg and Reddy and myself had formulas for the CD index of this in terms of the Andre permutations and sign variations of them. And just like in the Ehrenborg Reddy case, the, the uh, CD index of the Boolean algebra becomes like an eigenvector of the interval transform of the second kind. Ehrenborg and Reddy found all the eigenvectors of their Chebyshev operator of the second kind. I tried to cheat, copy their ideas, but I didn't succeed completely. The lifting operator needs to be changed what they had, and then they had this pyramid operator. And so the problem I run into is that we have a non-trivial kernel. If an expression is anti-symmetric, it's in the kernel. Okay, so I only have conjectures, namely that there is nothing more in the kernel than this anti-symmetric expression. And in the symmetric expressions, you can still copy the Ehrenborg ready construction, except that you will get a generating set and not a basis of eigenvectors, but this is only conjecture. And I ran out of time as promised. Let's thank God more. Questions. Thank you for a very lovely talk. Are there any questions? I don't see anything in the chat. 
beautiful results. Mm -hmm. So I would like to mention, if I have a moment here, that in my original paper, I mean original, in the paper where I was working with the derivative polynomials for tangent and secant, I was trying to look at stability, which asked whether the H polynomial has only roots with negative real parts or the F polynomial has roots only inside the unit circle. These are called Schur stability and, uh, and uh, Horvitz stability in the literature. And I made the conjecture that if you take the direct product of Horvitz stable posets, it will be Horvitz stable posets, it will be Horvitz stable. I didn't know how to do it, but now maybe with intervals transforms, the whole structure changes, but the phase numbers are the same. It could be worth looking at. At, at, at any rate, so the point is just that with these Chebyshev triangulations, you can save a lot of work computing the same formulas over and over again, I believe. Okay. Uh, actually, Richard Stanley has a question. Um, he says, what about a Q analog involving intervals of a subspace lattice over FQ? Well, I haven't looked at that. Uh, it sounds like an interesting question. I mean, already Ehrenborg and Reddy and then Jojic and Maitsev were, were looking at flag vectors. So yes, there should be refinements to this. Oh yeah, one more question I have <laughs> is that, so uh, in a way, maybe you can also true, uh, turn the other Chebyshev poset that I defined before, or the Chebyshev, my Chebyshev transform of the Gulen algebra into some sort of a type B polytope. And what's that? What's that? I don't know what's that. Yeah, it should be a polytope with the same face numbers, if it's a polytope. Yes, Richard? Do you have a question? Okay, sorry. All right, if there are no more questions, let's thank Gabor again.